Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. And right now it's time for our second hot topic. Yesterday, the Vice President of Nigeria, Kashim Shetima, unveiled the Light Up Nigerian project in the Southeast. Well, joining us to just talk about this is engineer Israel Esteogene Abraham. is the President, Chartered Institute of Power Engineers of Nigeria. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so we're talking about projects light up Nigeria, and this is happening in the southeast region. So um, the vice president talked about it yesterday, and it's supposed to, you know, just have like clusters of um, lighting up certain region. And um, what do you think about this? Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a good development. Every thing done to make power available in Nigeria is good development. No matter how, the, how small or how minute it may look like, whatever efforts we need, it, either from government, from individuals, as long as it's built on, either in clusters or in the grid as we know it, they are all good development. So I think it's a step in the right direction. Okay, just explain to us really what this means. All right, well, what that means, uh, especially taking the above power. Initiative, or maybe I mean, just just some yesterday, the above power project was also commissioned, and it was uh, the impetus of it to ensure that the above hub itself, market and everything around the above uh, metropolis and so others are taken care of from that power plant. The implication is that virtually every aspect of that area is fully lightened up. Small as it may look. But you have taken one sections out. If you have similar situations where you can take up a particular metropolis, maybe take a budget for instance, or maybe one locality, and you can actually power it completely. It means the economic activities in that area will get to uh, optimal. You know, virtually everything you want to do, whether production, manufacturing, uh, general, general commercial activities, they will all spring up because people will no longer look towards how to buy fuel to power the generators. We no longer look towards how to uh, maybe uh, look for how to go forward to be uh, trying to have alternative way to pass such uh, equipment or such uh, services they want to provide. Even banking and all the rest, network and even telecoms, they will all come up because you will not have such failures as you have, you will normally have. Because the old uh, BTS, that is the uh, antennas that are supposed to carry the power, uh, power or telecom lines will all be on a full blast of power. So power is central to every development. So we do not have development at all. The first measure to use in measuring that a place is developed or developing or coming up to standard is that there is power. I mean, that is present economic uh, 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 metrics to show that someone is developing or has been developed. Okay, so does this mean that um, in this southeast region there's going to be like 24 hours of power for the foreseeable future? Because we've seen, you know, cases whereby they say, oh, you know, we're working with the power, but then you, you barely see the power. So is this going to be maybe something that would happen for just a month or two, maybe like a photo op, and then subsequently there's no power or then it is reduced significantly? Hello, sir. No, no, I don't think so. Uh, I think the above project, for instance, I'm not seeing the above project. As, I'm not seeing the above project as a kind of example of what we are trying to discuss here. The entire is is large, but above is just a a metropolis or a kind of hub of its own with a lot of manufacturing going on, from um, uh, shoe manufacturing to engine. I mean, uh, uh, machines and all the rest going on in that area, maybe locally and being done kind of not optimally because of lack of power and lack of other infrastructures. So, but like I said, power is the first measure that you use to, um, uh, first metric you use to measure a, a particular uh, development in indices in, in, a, in, a, in an environment. And I want to say that if you have such kind of uh, project replicated in different other locations, maybe Enugu, for instance, uh, Umar here, and so on, Abakaliki, and all that. That's how you can now have them in clusters to come up to have, essentially, you can say, there's no pass, I mean, no failure in supply. 
for the above power project, I don't believe there will be a kind of situation where you are going to have power going out any, any, any very soon. But that's not going to happen. Reason because the uh, project design, these are those who design the project already have all the feasibility studies, have their own gas line to power the plant, which means they will power. And they also went ahead to have the distribution lines themselves. So they are doing both sides, both from generation down to marketing. It's a, it's a holistic uh, uh, arrangement from them, which I would say is totally uh, novel. It's novel in the sense that from where they generate down to where they distribute to the consumers, they are in charge of it all. So they can actually, actually take care of all that. They will know anybody accusing that of not delivering power or not taking power or whatever. All that will be out of it from this uh, example we are just giving right now from the Abapa Power project. So if we have such replicated in other areas, I think it will actually change the narrative around the country because you are sure of one thing that as they generate, they don't want to lose their money, not distribute it. So they are in charge, they are, they are in control. I mean, I'll put it that way, they are in control of, the, of that value chain within that hub by themselves. They know when and how we have the public and the public that is so they know how, I think that that is an ask from the gas make much in charge of the rest because they are a private entity. The customers also need the obligation for them to pay back or at least fund their activities. So I think it's a it's a situation right with such kind of arrangement. Okay, so I, I, I love this. I mean, I love the idea. I love the fact that, you know, this is being implemented because, I mean, we can all say bye-bye to our generators now in coming years. But if we're starting with the Abar Power Project, how soon can we start to see, you know, other clusters springing up across the country? Because, um, like it's, it says, it's Project Light Up Nigeria. So it's not just Project Light Up Abba. How do we start to see, um, you know, a change in our power sector? Because obviously everybody needs to get fuel or diesel to be able to power their, their generators. And it's, it's, it's not even cost effective at all. So when do we start to see, you know, other power projects springing up? Well, uh, there are, I would think I, would, I want to say that other power projects are actually coming up gradually, maybe not at the speed hmm. at which the project has now been uh, fully taken within the last few months. Because the other projects are taking almost 20 years, if you know, hmm. you know from reception, you just, uh, with a lot of bottlenecks here and there. Yeah. But I want to believe that the breakthrough of this project will actually give room for others to come up with the project. We learn from all whatever cases or whatever kind of uh, uh, issue and physical issues and whatever might have held up this very much up to that 20 years before it begins production. Same things. I want to believe that that will come up. So the federal government and the uh, state government and the individuals will be able to use this uh, narrative or narration that passed through this uh, situation to be able to now deploy their own. Uh, own uh, facilities and of course the market is there. Nigerians are hungry to use power, just like you observe. Everyone needs to use power in our homes, in our uh, small workshops, uh, small factories, or whatever business we want to do. We need power. So it's, it's, it's something that everybody needs. The question that is using Nigeria as a case, and let me go straight to the federal government as a, as a case in point, the act will now become sincerely of purpose. The federal government has to now be more sincere. Because you cannot say you want to do something, you want to get some to work and not do the right thing. Doing the right thing means look at the professionals. There is that need to always look towards who are those to do this thing, who are the people that are qualified to carry out these activities. You need to rely on them. And much more, you need to rely on your own people. I use that word, your own people. Because whatever technology, whatever the procurement of uh, things you want to do. You need to get your people involved. If you just have the government go to Japan and bring the power plant and put there, or go to there and bring there, bring Chinese and that to be for you, it's not sustainable. I'm not sure that you're not going to get some power, but sustainability is what you need. 
When you say you want to to follow supply, you are actually saying that you want it sustainable. In the same statement, even though they will be said differently, they are semantics. So you need your people to be on board. You need to rely and trust your people. As it stands, the federal government of Nigeria has not been able to trust its own people to do these things for them. That's the reality. So I want to believe that light of Nigerian project by federal government and by the state government and others, they will try to look in anyone to take their professionals and give them, put them in charge of the right thing, putting the right, I mean, around picks, around those of square pixels, square holes. So you can actually have the right people deploying what you want to deploy and it's sustainable because they know what to do and they train the next generation to maintain and manage and fight before long, you have things sustainably. Otherwise, you just uh, see that you are trying to do something and you are not getting track because you are using the wrong people or you are employing the wrong people or you are even appointing the wrong people to be in charge of what you want to do. If something is serious, it's a serious question. Mm. Hello, sir. Mm. I think his, his audio is a little bit bad. Um, so one question I was going to, to ask um, about this whole lighter project. I mean, like I said, I, I want power all the time. And I think power is like, you know, a major thing in Nigeria. As he has said, you know, even economic development, you know, relies on power but then are we going to really see the power because we've seen cases whereby we're you know giving power to other countries right but then nigeria is still lacking in this what is going to be the impact um of the abba power project now especially with other ones and i wanted to ask the continuity of government because if the abba power you know plant has taken over 20 years that shows that from different from one administration to another they've come in and just take gone on with it so isn't that what we're supposed to be looking at in nigeria and i wanted to get his thoughts because you know just having to say okay this is what we want to do and i'm sure that that was something we you know even spoke mm -hmm. about earlier in the show this is what we want to do this is what we're looking at for nigeria in the next 20 years so the importance of continuity in government yeah he said something about um sustenance or sustainability, sustainability. because uh uh, if you bring foreign uh, people and they do and then they go how will you maintain it and mm -hmm. all those kind of things and i was just asking myself um are, are people really that trustworthy when you give them buildings to build you give them the professionals they want to cut corners especially they now that the cement is very very mm -hmm. high i don't know how how many buildings will be collapsing right now mm -hmm. okay so but you know they have to work on themselves yes i know that if the government has not done much to uh, to build manpower that can do what they need to do and to monitor uh, what, what the, whatever they are doing. But he made a, a valid point that we should look inwards. Looking inwards does not just mean trusting someone with something, but also monitoring that person to make sure that he does the, the right thing yeah. uh, at the right time. Okay, I think we have another back. Yeah, okay. Okay, fantastic. So I was just speaking to him, go here, and I was just asking him about like continuity in government. Um, the fact that the about power project has taken this number of years before we're seeing this breakthrough, um, doesn't that show that each government, each administration that comes in, you know, needs to just continue from the last one? That way, we can now make those breakthroughs. Because if we're saying, you know, what I want to come and do my own stuff, um, whatever was done before me is abandoned, and then we, we might just never see a breakthrough like this one. Yes, and I agree with you completely on that. Uh, that, that is part of why I say that uh, we must look at it from the point of sustainability and not just bringing people in just for political patronage. Yeah. Because that is where political uh, uh, I mean, politics comes in. Every government must see it as part and parcel of what define development. When a government sees that way, it becomes easier. But I mean, I think we have a peculiar case in our, in our country where every government just like you have rightly think that, oh, I come out to do my own and go mm -hmm. my own and So we need to change our culture, first of all, because that is not something that just me or you can actually do. There has to be a kind of culture, culture in our uh, political space to know that one government must always, always ensure that the next one is doing that same. So there have to be a kind of plan. And it's not that we don't have plan. 
It's not as if we don't have we don't have plan uh, in the in the in the country. There is plan. There is development plan. There is national development plan already in place. Twenty five years, thirty years, forty years, and so on. All these plans are there. The difference is, do the government follow them? Who is actually in charge of this plan, and how is that person bringing it in for people to follow? This is what is missing. So there is a big new. Uh, a new narration of how government can see that it has a project and that project cannot stop. Whatever project that is awarded for a particular section will not, not be compared by the next one before you take up a new project. I do not know how the National Assembly will come up with that kind of idea, especially yeah. when it comes to economic uh, infrastructure like power, like road, and so on. If we can have such kind of um, in place that stop a government from just jumping into on a painting up vital. And this is what the politics of our exit. I tell you, no, don't worry, we don't need that one. What we need is a, a road that we need to be tell you what to take it to how she want to take it. Okay, well, I audio, think the audio is so bad. Well, that's what happens with um, <laughs> our network. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> if we have steady power, maybe we won't be mm -hmm, finding this. Mm -hmm, okay, mm -hmm. he said so. But yes, I think this is a good way to, to wrap it up. Um, um, I was just wondering, just uh, briefly, I was just wondering if we do have the power, can we pay? Because it's, the one, cost. Thing, yeah, it's exactly. one thing to have it, it's another thing to be able to afford it. So uh, maybe we're, we're not saying bye-bye to generators yet because mm. even right now, the places that have nearly 24 hours uh, power supply the negotiated with the people, uh, the NEPAs we call them, you mm. know, uh, that we can pay more, so give us more power. So they've been doing that. A lot of estates have nearly 24 hours power supply every day, but they pay through the roof mm -hmm. to get that. So will that be the same thing that will be replicated everywhere if we have steady power? That's a question that needs to be answered. If we cannot have it cheaper than we're having it now, then it will be almost the same thing. Mm. Especially with the Minister of Power coming out to say that, you know, they subsidize electricity tariff yeah, we'll and we cannot, they mm. cannot even subs Subsidy um, on electricity sustain gone. it. <laughs> Anyways, um, we'll be speaking to engineer Israel Asogene Abraham. He's the president of Chartered Institute of Power Engineers of Nigeria. And we've just been talking about the project Light Up Nigeria that has happened in the southeast. Um, so yeah, but this is where we have to wrap it up on the mm -hmm. show. It was so nice having breakfast with you mm. today. Thank you for joining us. Um, we'll see you again tomorrow. My name is Rome Paulson. Let there be light. My name is <laughs> Nyamgul. Let's do it again tomorrow. <laughs>